Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to Sismanoglio Megaro. Uh, it is with great pleasure that we continue our series of. Uh, uh, presentations of this magical multicultural world of the past, which is also a multicultural world of the present, and we all hope that it will continue to be a multicultural world in the future. Um, I don't want to play the role of saying the same things as someone who has bigger authority than myself and uh, knows it better, so I will ask Professor Baltas to introduce our panel of tonight. And I just wanted to tell you that we are very happy that you are all here and uh, that it seems that this initiative we had uh, is a source of interest for many important and serious persons as you. Professor Baltas. Dear friends, uh, dear colleagues, good evening. It is my pleasure to open the second circle of uh, speeches whose topic is armeno turkish literature, works printed in the Turkish language with Armenian script. We shall hear today about books, newspapers, and periodicals produced by and for the Turkish-speaking Armenians in the Ottoman Empire, an extremely active community from both an intellectual and a cultural viewpoint. The numbers of armeno turkish publication alone testifies to this. Istepanyan's bibliography reveals that over 100, 1,000 uh, 1, armeno turkish books were printed between 1727 and 1968. And Bedros der Matosian presented a list of more than 30 distinct newspapers published in armeno turkish which circulated during the 19th century. Armeno Turkish book production is clearly more extensive and long lasting than that of Karamalidika books. It is more extensive because, as the missionaries note in their reports, the Armenians, Armenians, middle class living in the urban centers, for the most part, were of higher intellectual level than the Turkish-speaking Orthodox Anatolians. Armeno turkish book production was also part of the publishing world of much longer, as the historical fate of the Turkish-speaking Armenians and the Turkish-speaking Orthodox was different when the Ottoman Empire came to an end. Armeno turkish book production also includes many religious books issued by the Protestant missionaries who were not only involved in proselytizing but also were also responsible for major educational projects in the Armenian community in the Ottoman Empire. Most of Armeno turkish publications, though are secular books, trade manuals, school books, dictionaries, grammars, translation of uh, uh, European literature that were printed in Venice, in Vienna, Istanbul and Smyrna, Trieste, Boston, New York, and el elsewhere. We shall hear about this later from those competent in these topics. In this brief introduction, I would like to mention the influence exercised by Armeno Turkish printed matter on my research 
into Karamalidika publication. Having, having published, published the first two volumes of Karamalidika bibliography in 1987, I began searching in Istanbul for non-registered Karamalidika publication. It was the time when Robert Anhenger published Evangelinos Misailidis Karamalidika novel, Tamasai Dunya, in modern Turkish. And in Istanbul also his friend and companion Andreas Tice also issued Agapi Hikegesi, the Armeno Turkish novel of Vartan Pasa Vartanyan. The impossible love story between two young people originating from different communities. Agapi was the daughter of Gregorian Armenians and Agop, her lover, a Catholic. During that time, the end of the 80s, studies of Kevork Pamucian and Turgut Kurt Studies uh, uh, on armeno turkish publication were being published in Tarikh Vetoplum, studies that I read without fail. I first came into contact, contact with armeno turkish editions in the Antikarian bookshop, Librerie de Pera, the renowned ancient room bookshop run by Thalia Nomidi. Mrs. Thalia Nomidis. And I began to learn about them with the help of Puzant Akbash, who worked there. Puzant supplied me with a copy of the rare first edition of the Armeno Turkish bibliography, published in 1985 in Erevan during the time of uh, Soviet socialism. And then, some years later, he and his colleague, Emin Nedret Ishli, republished it with certain additions. On studying the Armeno Turkish together with the Karamanlidika titles, I realized the largely common course of Karamanlidika and Armeno Turkish literature. For example, the missionaries from the American Board for Foreign Missions were printing the same Turkish book in both uh, Armenian and Greek script. The same happened with periodicals. They published Angeliophoros and Angeliophoros Chojuklarichun for the Turkish speaking Orthodox rooms and likewise Avetaber and Avetaber Chojuklarichun for the Turkish speaking Armenians with exactly the same content. Yet, this parallel course pursued by Karamanlidika and armeno Turkish editions was not confined to proselytizing publications. Titles of popular Karamanlidika books, such as, for example, Kyoroglu of 1872, state that the edition was based on a previous Armenian, Armenian, in other words, armeno Turkis one. And European novels were available firstly in Armenian and Greek script before being printed in Arabic characters. Most often, logically, the armeno Turkis edition took precedence. The scope of my observation, therefore, widened and a new horizon took shape before me. I began to better understand the intellectual life and publishing market in the Turkish speaking Christian world of the Ottoman Empire. The years of innocent had passed. I realized that it was not sufficient to study its kind of literature separately. The, desi the desideratum was to study the three literatures, Ottoman, Karamanlidika, armeno Turkis, with regard to their 
διαχρονή, διαχρονία and synchrony, excuse me for the sardam. Uh, not only as they were part of a whole, but also because in this way alone could the common points and peculiarities be revealed during times of significant political and social change within the Ottoman Empire. Today's circle of talks comes to address precisely this issue. Two old friends, Puzant Akbas and Sabri Koz, are here to speak to us about armeno turkish editions and the position they, have, they hold in relation to the corresponding Armenian and Turkish ones. With us also is the younger Murat Tsankara, with a doctor, uh, with a PhD in armeno turkish literature and a term of teaching in this new academic field at Sapanji and Michigan universities. I hope that we shall soon see the book from the dissertation he wrote at Bilkent University entitled Empire and Novel, placing armeno turkish novels in Ottoman Turkish literary historiography. And I also hope he will be among those to establish armeno turkis as a subject at university level. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the Sismanoglio Megaro. Questions and discussion will follow after three speeches are over. Murat, you have take the podium. The secular. Do I have to turn this on? Okay. Uh, before I begin, I would like to express my gratitude to Sismanoglio Megaro, Victor Maligudis, Nikos Matiudakis, and Evangelia Valta for organizing this wonderful series of lectures and for inviting me. It's a pleasure being here and talking. It's better now? Okay, sorry. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure talking together with Puzan Takbash and Sabri Koz. Um, I'll try to present a survey of Armeno Turkish. It won't be a detailed or scholarly presentation. I just aim to introduce the phenomenon, but I did my best to pepper the presentation with some details that would possibly attract the attention of specialists as well. Here's the plan. I will address the following questions. What is Armeno Turkish? Who would produce and consume these texts? Why would they do it? What kind of texts are we talking about? Facts, figures, and examples? And I'm sure uh, Puzant Bey and Sabri Bey will present better examples. And finally, what are the broader questions that could be asked about Armeno Turkish? Uh, what is Armeno Turkish? Under normal circumstances, there are three things you would encounter when you're interested in Armeno Turkish. It's basically Turkish language written in the Armenian letters, characters, or scripts. It's mostly written by and for Armenians who is, whose mother tongue was Turkish, Catholic Armenians, that is, Mekhitarists, and Protestant missionaries played an important role in the promotion of what we call Armeno Turkish. If you ever would like to do research on the phenomenon and use some keywords and do some research in library catalogs, find the book, buy a second-hand Armeno-Turkish book, um, these are more, more or less the terms you have to use. Hayader Turkeren, Dutch Keren, meaning Turkish, Armeno-Turkish, Armeno-Turk, Turkish and Armenian script characters, Ermenice harfli Türkçe ibareli, Ermeni ül huruf Türkçe ül ibare, I don't want to be hard on our interpreter because I didn't provide the text beforehand, but these all mean Armeno Turkish. It doesn't differ, just to give you some familiarity. Um, as you see, there is no consistent terminology. Sometimes it's used to refer to a distinct literature and sometimes to a language other than Turkish, especially in contemporary accounts. And at times it is even called Armenian, like the language itself. 
these are the points that more or less all the researchers share. These are mostly religious texts, not widespread, written in mainly vulgar Turkish, not Turkish, not Armenian. Um, what do I mean? Uh, th these are all true, but also wrong. I'll try to show, I'll try to prove why. Uh, for a long time, the texts have been overlooked or looked down upon by scholars, especially for scholars. I, I mean, uh, th there, there have been researchers who were interested in uh, Armeno Turkish. We should uh, give the name of uh, Kevork Pamukcian here. Uh, uh, but scholars, especially, stayed away from Armeno Turkish for these reasons. These are a bunch of minor texts, mainly religious polemics, uh, and uh, they were not known to many, so they don't deserve scholarly attention. One of my professors advised that I took up a philosophical, a more philosophical subject when I told him that I decided to work on Armeno Turkish. That's where we were. Um, it's easy to understand why they are not Turkish or Armenian, why they do not take place in either of the national historiographies, literary historiography or historiography, because um, yes, they were not known, they were not easily available to many people, no specialized libraries, many people were not even aware that they were Armenian or Turkish, because you'd see the script, I'll show you examples, and it's, it's like Armenian, so you don't understand. But also they contain something of the other, the language or the script. So we understand why they were left out while drawing the borders of national cultures. I have to repeat this joke. I, I, I have to do it whenever I uh, present a similar uh, lecture. This is not something like, or this was not something like baklava or coffee. Uh, it's not something to fight for. It's something to reject, at least for a long time. Before the 2000s, it was like that. I must add one thing. Uh, some theoretical concepts in humanities and social sciences from the second half of the 20th century made Armeno Turkish more attractive during the last decade, like hybridity, metissage, minorness, in betweenness. So it's better now. We're in a better situation because it's, it's, it has become a fancy topic. These are. I'm sorry, oh. I have to talk slowly, more slowly. These facts and figures are taken from Hasmik Stepanyan's book, Bibliography on Armeno Turkish Publications. I'm sure uh, Puzant Bey will uh, talk more about the book. Um, it, it's not a perfect bibliography, but it's the best we have. So at least it will give you an idea. The manuscripts date back to 14th century, Printed works go back to 18th century. The press dates back to 19th century. There are more than 2,000 items in the book. If we leave out the recurrences, it's, it's more, more than 1,000. Uh, the dates are 1727 and 1968, the end dates. Uh, the 1968 book was printed in Argentina, Buenos Aires. Uh, nearly 400 plays staged by Armenian groups. Most of these texts weren't printed, but supposedly they are somewhere in the uh, monastery in San Lazaro in Venice in a big luggage in manuscript forms. Um, there were over 100 periodicals, more than 200 printing houses, and more than 50 cities published Armeno Turkish books. Why? This is the single most question I must. Why, why would people write in Armeno Turkish? What is the reason for this? I think this is quite striking for modern people who, who tend to associate national cultures, languages, scripts, writing systems. So we think that they are not separable from one another. But this was not always the case. First, of course, the strong bond between the Armenian alphabet the Arme and the Armenian nation. Uh, we cannot skip that. So in, in most of the cases, if you ask somebody what was the three most important things in the history of Armenians, one of them is the invention of uh, the Armenian alphabet. 
moreover, there, there are those who argue that the Armenian nation has survived thanks to the Armenian alphabets. Unlike Turks, who wrote their language in more than 10 writing systems, the Armenians wrote more than 10 languages with their script. The, the contrast is very striking. It's worth thinking over. The difficulty caused by the Arabic alphabet, it's something you will find everywhere. The lack of vowels in the Arabic alphabet, whereas you have the vowels in the Armenian alphabet, so it's more suitable for Turkish, which is a separate topic. Uh, but also this, if one does not go through the classical Ottoman education system, where you memorize Persian Arabic vocabulary, you recite the Quran, the Rabbi Yasser prayer, and learn how to combine the letters, how to write, which is something separate other than reading. It's not easy to, to read or write Ottoman Turkish. So this is one reason. The tension between classical and modern Armenian is also important. Um, we have a good example, Josef Vartanyan, the author of Akabi Kaisi, whom Evangelia Balta mentioned in 18, in the beginning of 1850s, he's complaining and he's explaining why he had to write in Armeno Turkish. And he says, if I write in classical Armenian, no one will understand. If I write in modern Armenian, it's not yet fully developed, so I'll have to use classical Armenian vocabulary. So the best is to write in Armeno Turkish so that more people can read it. Finally, this is how I explain Armino Turkish mainly to my students um, when I realize that they don't understand exactly what I mean. I say, have you ever seen your grandmother reading the Quran? Most, in most cases, the answer is yes. And then I ask, does she know or did she know Arabic? No, then what would she do? She could read the letters and uh, pronounce the sounds, but she didn't know the meaning. So for, for an average Armenian who would go to church, um, to go through church rituals, you would know the letters, even if you didn't understand the language. Mm -hmm. And then you would combine it with the language you spoke daily at home. It's a practical solution. The other two I'm leaving out now, they're technical details. Who? This is another good question. Yes. There is the tension between missionaries, Protestant American board missionaries, Mechitaris, and the Armenian church. For the Protestant missionaries to appeal to a wider audience, they would translate the Bible into Turkish. Many Armenians would speak Turkish, so they would translate other books into Armeno Turkish as well. They would teach the Armenian alphabet in the schools they established. And then the Apostolic Church used Armeno Turkish as a method of counter propaganda and then the Mechitarist Catholics. So there are wonderful uh, books, uh, polemic literature. This religious literature is important. But this is not the only thing. For example, for Orientalists, Armeno Turkish was important because it was the only source where they could find in a written source, the pronunciation of words or colloquial Turkish. So dictionaries, conversation manuals were very important for them. And Westerners, not only merchants, not only young missionaries who wanted to learn Turkish, but also travelers. It was much harder for them to learn Turkish, spoken Turkish, to a certain degree in the Arabic alphabet. But Armeno Turkish manuals, and we have them throughout the 19th century, was an easier, easy, easily accessible source and uh, unlike, I mean, contrary to common belief and the arguments of the so-called millet system of the Ottoman Empire, the Armenian alphabet, or even Armeno Turkish, was well known, relatively well known by most Muslim intellectuals, especially in the second half of the 19th century. This is a huge topic I'm, I've been working on for two years. Um, I can show examples uh, maybe in the questions and answer parts. I won't go into details, but just I've written down the, the reasons why they would learn the Armenian alphabet or why they would be interested in the Armenian alphabet, the Muslims. Political surveillance to understand what's going on in the Armen Armeno Turkish press. Thank you. <laughs> the need for textbooks, the modernization of public education in the Ottoman Empire, 
And then you would need textbooks, mathematics, chemistry. There are wonderful examples. Easier access to French literature. This is linked with the need for textbooks and the public education because it became easier for a Muslim intellectual to learn the Ar Armenian alphabet from a classmate in two days and then read a whole bunch of new literature. You double or triple the texts available to you in your language in two days. You cannot easily do it with French. And then you begin reading modern French literature, which you're craving for, in your language, in prose, which is wonderful. And then this is linked to the vernacularization process. Armino Turkish was a model for some Muslims because when compared to Ottoman Turkish in the Arabic alphabet, it was more colloquial for obvious reasons. So there was a model. So it's very crucial in the process of vernacularization of the Turkish language, number one, maybe. And then, uh, of course, the debates on the Arabic alphabet, there are striking examples in the 80s, 17, uh, no, 1870s, 80s, 90s, beginning of the 20th century, there were Muslim intellectuals who would object to the adoption of Latin alphabet and say, if we ever accept that we have to change our alphabet, believe me, it's not the Latin, it's either the Armenian or the Greek, preferably the Armenian. Okay, so I've brought a number of texts and I'm sure Puzant Bey and Sabri Bey will uh, display better ones, but I have to show them so that you can visualize Armino Turkish and some examples I think will be interesting. This is taken from a PhD dissertation of a friend, Günil Cepe. Uh, she put the data in Hasmik Stepanyan's book on an Excel sheet. To, to see the map, the larger map. What are we talking about? One third of the books are religious. Uh, th there are problems because we don't know the genre. Um, we just can guess. I mean, the title in 19th century, it's, it's not a postmodern era, so we more or less understand what it is about. But it's still a guess. Literature is important, almost one third. But then linguistics, books, conversation manuals, dictionaries are very important, textbooks. Uh, and the, the, the other category is very interesting. There are um, cookbooks, score books. I've seen manuscripts, unbelievable sources, I could say. Maybe one thing I can underline. You see this boom in literature in the 1880s. 90s, this 10 year period, this is <coughs> approximately the time when in the Ottoman Empire, especially the capital, we have a literary market. Um, so th it deserves special attention. This is the time when the European uh, bestsellers, Eugène Sue's novels, serial novels like the soap operas today, were translated into Armenian, Arabic, and Greek scripts, respectively. A, a, a new, maybe cosmopolitan intellectual elite in uh, being educated in those mixed schools, reading French literature. So it's it's the time. This is from an Armeno-Turkish novel, Karnik Gülinya uh, and Dikran's Horrible Death, a 500-page, amazingly interesting novel, a fantastic novel. Just I'll say something, only one thing about the novel and you'll understand. One of the protagonists in this novel is a dog who is severely criticizing modernity. Like, it's, it's sometimes like reading Zimmel or Benjamin. Note, 1863. These were very popular. Some of them were printed more than 10 times. The folk stories, Aşık Kerem ile Aslı Han'ın hikayesi, most of the time with the türküleri ile beraber, with the songs included. This is an Armino Turkish journal from Izmir, Hüsnü Niyet, the goodwill maybe, if you will, 1911. Um, this is the first 
issue. This is one of those, the literary market, the boom, Eugène Seuss, um, the Wandering Jew. Th these are incredibly beautifully printed, like two or three volumes in Greek, Armenian, Arabic scripts, well bound, very, I mean, the, the language is very accessible if, if you read it, and the, the footnotes, the, uh, and Evangelia Balta is very right in saying that because she, as far as I know, she made the call for a comparative approach to, to these novels and translations, which has not been done yet. Uh, this is a no, Armenian grammar. This is very important because it shows us how Armino Turkish was, after a certain point, the method to transfer Armino Turkish to Armenian language itself. There are reasons for this, but an Armenian grammar in Armeno Turkish. And it's, I should note that the first printed book in Armeno Turkish, as far as I know, is uh, Mekitar's uh, grammar in Armeno Turkish, an Armenian, modern Armenian grammar in Armeno Turkish. This is, this is just torn away from a notebook, 1895, after the pogroms in uh, Kayseri, Kayseri Destane, it shows us how Armino Turkish was embedded in the lives of people. It's not like the missionary project. It's not something like minor away there. No, it, people would write Armino Turkish. Th this is vital. It's from the civil code, Mecelle. The left hand is Armenian, the right hand is Armino Turkish. This is one reason why many people wouldn't identify, couldn't identify Armino Turkish texts in libraries. They would throw them away in Turkey because it's, they would think it's Armenian. In journals, they are mixed as well. You see many examples. This is from a dictionary, 1846, printed in Vienna. Um, the middle column is Turkish written in the Latin alphabet, an early example. <laughs> Very early, I mean, when compared to 1928. Uh, and the right hand is Armino Turkish. And the Italian reads at the bottom. So if you really want to learn Turkish well and pronounce it seriously, I mean, true to its nature, please stick to these columns. You'll, you'll learn it. Otherwise, it's hard. Okay, what is this? Arapo politas yinekas. It's Armeno Greek. It's the only example I could find. It's the first time I'm showing this. We have examples. Huh? I, I, I have, I have no, no, no, I'm sorry. Sure. No, no, sure. Okay, so, but this is 17 sentences, the same sentence. I love women very much. In, in uh, the Armenian script, it's noted that it's the alphabetical order. The bottom is Kurdish, Jinan Pur Hazdikim. And then Turkeren, Karuları Çok Severim. And, the, and the, the bottom reads, if only this, this man or, uh, I mean, instead of saying this sentence in 17 language, in one language could love his wife or something, it's just. It's from 1907. Okay, I'm ending with the larger contexts. There are many striking examples, but if, if you want to place this phenomenon into a larger context, which we should do now, it's time, it, it gives us important clues about cultural encounter. Because if we, if we, if we take it for granted, if the millet system, the compartments, the medley of peoples which come together, do not mix, do not combine, have their own. So it's, it's highly, it's a political way of putting things. And it's actually the whole system, the so-called system is retrospective and then it's derived from judicial practices. You cannot make it cover all cultural aspects of life and you cannot treated as, mm, as something valid, as something which applies to all layers of the society. So um, Armino-Turkish is a good way 
to, to put down this millet system thing, the barriers. Standardization of Turkish, it's very important. Westernization and mediation for Muslims accessing certain aspects of Western culture in their language through Armenian Turkish is very important. And verbal violence, which I, I'm working on now, uh, it's something serious. But if, if, we, if we just look at it, I mean, if, if you see the overview, Armenians through Armeno Turkish, not only through Armeno Turkish, but especially through Armeno Turkish, contributed in the standardization of the Turkish language. But then after the 80s, 90s, I think they were among the first victims of verbal violence inflicted through standard Turkish, especially you can see it in, in a, what we call Geleneksel Türk Tiyatro, so traditional Turkish theater, which is another subject. Um, thank you for your patience. Oh, and this is it. It. This is it. yeah. It. Köpek. <laughs> Okay, ben buradan bir şey açacağım mı? Çok teşekkür ederim. Bir şey açacağım mı sizin için? Yok, benim tabii. Bu Kutra Bakır. Yes. Çok teşekkür ederiz Murat Bey. We hope that you will continue with some very good studies in the future. And I will call now Sabrikos to present his paper, which concerns the position of the Armeno Turkish editions uh, between the Turkish book production. Sabrikos is uh, a very renowned specialist uh, on Turkish folklore, a very good <coughs> editor. He works now in Yapikridi Banka as editor, then is my editor. And you have uh, in front of you the book, which prepared for us now. He was also a very good teacher in an Armenian, Armenian Turkish Armenian school. Sabrim, Lutfen. Affedersiniz. I'm sorry, I, I didn't have my headset, so I didn't understand what Evangelia told. But I'm sure she told nice things about me. And if it wasn't like that, it would not be possible for me to take place in front of such a great participant. It, it all happened thanks to his, uh, thanks to her friendship. So what was my problem? I could have sit in at my own home. I could have dealt with my own things. But I was interested in Shara Mumjian, the pianist. Did he die or? Yes, he died. I asked you for three times and you tell me in front of everyone now. I wanted to tell it all in here. May he rest in peace. In Hurriyet newspaper, we were preparing an encyclopedia, and one day I went to see Shara Mumjian, and I didn't know he was a, an Armenian. Everyone's telling him, Mr. Shara, Mr. Shara, because he was close to the bus. He was photocopying the all day. Then I asked him, are you Armenian? And he told me, yes, I am Armenian. And I told him, I am a Turkish teacher. I am teaching Turkish. And I am interested in 
folklore. And I'm reading Turgut Kut's scripts and I know Fuat Köprülü's article about this. And I have heard and read that there are many books written with Armenian script and I asked him, can you help me? And he told me, he was speaking this great Istanbul Armenian language. It was one of the two people who could speak it so perfectly. One of them was Mr. Shara and the other one was Mrs. Simgesha. And as Murat Bey told us, you should think about Armenian Turkish. I didn't agree with some of his ideas. If I get it correctly from the translation, in fact, in the days when the world was in a perfect manner and the people were in great relations, the Armenian people created a perfect and great Turkish culture and Turkish literature and nobody forced them to do it. They were very voluntarily and eagerly doing this. If it were different, then we couldn't have Ashul, which were more than 3,000 and which were spoken by the Turkish people in the Caucas, Caucasian area. They created a common literature with their neighbors and where tradition exists I don't think we need to force and impose some educational sanctions because we are talking about the literature which is in Turkish and at a period and in some geographies it was created jointly by Armenian, the Rums, the Turkish, the Georgian people, the Kurdish people and they were using Turkish which was the common language of the empire very easily like anyone else and this has rise during the millet idea but it was an unfortunate thing the conflicts and the irregularities after 90s during that time the provincial newspapers and journals of Ottoman Empire were published with Armenian script and Arabic script in Bursa, in Adana, there were journals and newspapers with Armenian script and one of the biggest specialists is now here with us, so I cannot talk while he is here, but was a great cultural movement, not only in Anatolia, in north of Black Sea, there was Armenian Kipchak language, which dated back to very old times, so the relation of Armenian with Turkish was based on very old times. The commercial texts and the religious texts were very rich. So we can speak and handle them between us, but what I try to tell you is that the Turkish folklore, the Armenian folklore, the Kurdish folklore or the folklores of the other people, the public literature of them, 
Parmak çocuk masalının dünyanın bütün iklimlerinde tercüme edilmeden anlatılması gibi. Was like telling the little child story being told in all geographies of the world without being translated. So there were many motives and when Ottoman language was also included, it was enriched too much. There were poets who were telling with Kurdish words and they were reading so much, so many poems. Also there were Armenian origin poets who were speaking in Turkish and it's much more colorful and much more productive and efficient. Why? Because in no other junk I mean in those notebooks which are long there are some masterpieces which were created by these Armenian poets. For example, Sayat Nova was creating works in four languages with music and with verbal literature he was creating so many works. Maybe it's an extreme example because there is no other one like him. But the Armenian who were living in the Anatolia and in Istanbul were speaking Armenian, Turkish and they were also creating poems which were in Armenian and Turkish 50-50. Shara Mumcia gave me this. This is one of the photocopies that he gave me. It's almost 37 years old. With the photocopies that I took from encyclopedias, I worked till morning in order to make a meaning from one sentence because I didn't know Pusant Akbaş back then. In order to read them, I paid so much effort. And believe me, as mentioned by Murat Bey, I figured it out without any teacher. How did I figure it out? Anyone can do it. Sometimes the youngster came, come to me and tell me we want to learn as well. It is very easy. Why? Because first you will get the letters in front of you. How they are pronounced with the Latin alphabet. There are some a few letters which are difficult to pronounce. But in the Turkish texts you will see that they didn't write them in order to tell it with a fluent Armenian. They were using it with their Turkish correspondence equivalents. So those are not the vowels which are difficult to pronounce. So you don't have to learn them while working on the Turkish texts. But if you have an assistant or you have, if you have friends that are uh, very well qualified, you may figure them out as well. After writing the letters against them, you will put a line in front, you will magnify it with a photocopy and you will also write down how to pronounce it in Turkish and if you do it ten times then you can read the words very easily. While I was working on main Britannica encyclopedia I was going to Maslak from Kızıl Toprak and I had a small photocopy paper with me 
and the alphabet in front of me, I figured it out while going back and forth to Maslak. And I am very happy to say when Istanbul University held Turkology conference in those years, I was introduced to Kevok Pamukcian. May he rest in peace as well. Mr. Kevok, some of you know him, surely. Mr. Kevok was an Armenian from Kayseri. And his family was laughed during the deportation and he was a very good person. In an article I wrote about him, I said he was an Armenian dervish and I gave that article to him before he died and he said to me, do you think it will be misunderstood, my friend? And I asked, and I told him, why should it be misunderstood? Because you most of the time deal with helping the others more than your own works. You respond to all the letters from all over the world. You translate for them, you work for them. And when I get sick, you light candle for me and pray for me. So you are not a dervish, but am I a dervish? And he said, okay then. And that article was not published, unfortunately. I had written it for a journal in Lebanon and I said it, sent it to Garok Abrahamian as a friend of mine, but it was published in the first volume of his bibliography. So we are making a book about him now. We worked for years, but unfortunately we could not complete it. But this is a gift to him, and there are two sections. I'm also talking about the incidents that happened before his death. I write and he reads. And hopefully, when we issue that book, he said those words will be written on his tombstone. How do you say that? And we will go to the graveyard and we will give orange juice and cookies to those who come. Yes, that is it, what you do in front of the graveyard. So, Keorg Pamukcian was a big country embassy and he never complained about this. He wanted to tell, he wanted to teach and he devoted his life to teaching and telling. And during those years, Turgut Kut came to Turkey from America and I met him. He is also an expert of this area and we passed on the way he passed with blind steps because he was able to make use of those big libraries in America that are well organized and we had to establish that knowledge that he gained from those libraries. This is, for example, one thousand nights and it was translated by Hoanis Tolayan. This is volume one. I have read all the translations written 
on this including the translation published by the publishing house I'm working for I worked a lot in order not to issue that book but it was not possible I have never seen a text which tells 1001 nights so greatly this is translated from French and Mihran Bidar Arabajian was translate, uh, translated volume 2, volume 3 and volume 4. It's such a great and nice Turkish. This is a very profound one. There is Arabajian street in Kapalı Çarşı, Grand Bazaar. This is a very old family in Istanbul. And with the help of my friends, I was able to publish this book. There are Turkish and Armenian manis that I translated, and most of them were taken from booklets which Mihran Bidar Arabajian published and some of them were given to me as a gift from Puzant Bey and I picked some of them from the bookstores. I was assigned to Feriköy Armenian Secondary School. In our time it was called the private Feriköy Armenian School. But after I left, its name was pronounced as Mahremetjian School, as it was pronounced in the past. I don't know about it now because the school was separated into two parts as an elementary school and a secondary school. And in that school, there was another teacher. Maybe there is someone who was his student, Shushan Kaçukyan. He was from Sivas and he was 80 years old when I met him. I swear to you, she was the second woman that I loved as a mother after my own mother. She had seen a lot. She went to Jordan when she was a baby and she grew up there. But she was telling us about Kerem and Aslı. As you know, Kerem's darling is an Armenian, a daughter of a Karabash, a monk because of the hat he was wearing. And during the journeys of Kerem in Anatolia, there is one thing said. He says, now I can see the mountains of Sivas. And Shushan, Mrs. Shushan, used the, those words a lot. Aşık Derdiço from Edbistan told Kerem Enaslı so nice with these tall verses. Do you mean to burn me like Kerem? Are you Aslı, the daughter of the monk, my lover? So, if we go around Anatolia, we may see many Turkish men and many Armenian girls and many Turkish girls and Armenian boys who fell in love with each other. In middle Anatolia, everyone knows Ahçik game. Ahçik is actually not a song, but it is a tear. Either you will be a Muslim or I will be an Armenian and we will be mixed into each other.
Öğlen paydoslarında yemeklerimizi yedikten sonra After eating our lunch during breaks we used to give lectures with Miss Shushan and she was dealing with the babies all the day and she spent one hour for me during the lunch break and she taught me a lot of things and Mrs. Shake I referred to her as well describing Shashe Hanım is not my duty as a teacher but I hope she will live longer she is a philosopher, philosopher. if she starts my mother used to tell then most probably she will be telling a word of virtue or she will be telling a proverb and during my days when I was suffering a lot Shakya Hanım was calling me on the fall she was not picking specially but with the words that came to her mind then she was trying to make me so happy and she was trying to relieve me and I think I could have lived by the end of my life with her it is such a great chance to be her son her nephew but Puzant is jealous of me in 1994, a book that was published, The Weird Stories of Nasrettin Hoca, I translated that book into Latin alphabet and Professor Pertov uh, Nail Bora. I referred to him and I sent a copy to him. He is an expert in this area. And his response to me was I have been working on Asetin Hoca's jokes for 50 years now and I planned to create a corpus. I want to publish a collection, but I regret not working with the young people like you. I wish you could have given me a hand and we could do it together. So the Turkish Nasrettin Hoca jokes published with Armenian scripts are as precious as Ottoman manuscripts, he wrote to me in his letter. Then Ermeni Ashur, Bidari, and Mihran Arabajian. I think a PhD, a dissertation could be written about her. Why don't you write? No, you should do it. You can write Bidari's cultural life, and I will publish that book. Imagine, Bidari has copyright novels which was written in Turkish and she translated at least 20 novels from French. And she also has Turkish translations. She learned perfect French and we don't know anything about her life. She didn't bring together her poems in a book, but Ashu Nami Efendi, uh, she published her Divan Name twice and Nami's Master. The Ashiks are recalled with their master, and his master was Serveri Efendi, Kirkor Serveri from Bursa. 
And there is this well-known poem. Niceler bu tavrı revişten geçti. Sana kar etmedi filan diye uzar gider. Bu şimdi. This is a very long poem like this. And bu koşmayı, öyle gelen bu koşmayı sahiplenmiş. Everyone owned this Fakat poem. But yazmalarda var. We can see it in the manuscripts of Serveri Efendi in the archives with the names of other people and Turkish radios and televisions use it with the names of the other people but you can see this in Serveri Efendi's divan. I mean in the back in the old good days, we created a common culture. The Anatolian foods are known by Arabic, by the Armenian, by the Turkish people. And we brought together those cooks in cookbooks with Armenian script. Also, those good poems. We published them in Turkish, in Armenian, with mixed, with two of them, and we know that those books, those journals, those uh, newspapers were a bridge between two of us. We forgot it now, but we will remember it and we are forced to live all together and we will love each other more than ever because there is one Anatolia and we will connect to each other. I should no longer speak, I should give the floor to Puzant Akbash because he is our master in books and in armeniology. He is the master and teacher of all of us. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Sabrikos, thank you very much for these narratives that the, uh, all these memories of your education in Armeno Turkish, we have to repeat uh, the circle because we wait <laughs> to learn about the position of Armeno Turkish between the Turkish literature. Yeah. And now we will have uh, the paper of Puzant Akbas. The Armenian Puzant, very renowned between the scholars, academic people, and collectioners. A very good scholar on Armenian literature in Armeno Turkish, in Karamalidika, and a big, big collection, collectioner of uh, rare books. Puzant. First, I would like to thank Evangelia, and I would like to thank Sabrikos and Murat. I liked the presentations a lot. Both of them told us very nice things. Now, I would like to thank the Consumatriades, Consul General. Also, I would like to give my heart, heartfelt feelings to Professor Evangelia Balta for thinking in, on this subject. Distinguished guests and participants, the Turkish literature with Armenian script, I think most of you do not know when and how they started. The manuscripts with Armenian Turkish, the old poems and novels date much back before 1727. 
Sayın Arti İstapanyan ben Kardik İspet İstapanyan başkaların 1727 yılında var olduğu ya da o yıl başkaları pressures in those years and it started in, in back in those years we published a book named the books with Armenian Turkish script and it is considered as an onset as a, as a beginning I can never forget it in publication of this book my friend Yücel Dağlı paid a lot of efforts and I would like to commemorate him as well First of all, this is a very ancient language which has been spoken for 3,000 years. Three different types of Armenian, Krapa, Eastern Armenian and Western Armenian. In two big provinces, and they are divided into small dialects with more than 21 dialects. Gemerek, Samsun, Antakya, Hacun, Zeytun, Erzurum, Van, Adana and Merzifon Armenian dialects are only some of them. They are all different. And Turkish poems with Armenian scripts, some historical works, they can be found in Armenian state library. And we know that they date back to third or fourth century. Kudüs, Jerusalem. Armenian Library, Ottoman Armenian Patriarch Library, Beirut Armenian Library have manuscripts which can be found on this subject. And the tablets that were found in the old years indicate that this language was spoken more than 3,000 years ago. The Armenian people could not write their own language with their own alphabet, but they spoke. And Christianity was accepted as a religion and it is accepted as 4th century BC and actually corresponds to 304, 304 BC. And after like the Faftis in Frat River, uh, the church starts a fight to write this and Bazos Mekros found the letters Mastosh used the seven old letters and created an alphabet of 36 letters the location was Mesopotamia and the date was 405 BC the Bible and the church books were started to be written with Armenian scripts and the first translation of Bible was named as the Queen of Translations Takuhi Takumanas in Armenia but unfortunately Rabar was the language of the church and it was a language which was hard and for 100 years after 405 the religion was written with the Greek alphabet and the people also consent to this and they start to pray in Krapari in Armenia.
And in the history of Armenian books, there are three important periods. One of them is 1071, the Malanskite War, when the Seljuki started to conquer Anatolia, the Armenian started to migrate to north and south-west and settle in Kilikia. The city of Hani is distracted and turns into a city of Ash. Rene Gunuse, Astermagian, Sardarian, Revon Anishan, and Jacques de Morgan and similar Armenian historicists describe the war and the migration that came along in the history books in detail. And then the second day is when Timurlen conquered the whole of Anatolia, including the Ottoman Empire, which is the start of the 15th century. Hilder Bezet was defeated in Ankara War. And what is important for the history books in here is that the historicists say that Timur Lenk destroyed 40,000 manuscripts. Today there are 80,000 manuscripts with Armenian, Turkish, Greek, Turkish, Kurdish, and more than half of them were devastated and burned by Timur Lenk in that war. We see that a very huge culture was distracted. And the third day is 1915. Krikor Zohra, Taniel Varushan, Siamato, and Sava, and similar other masters were murdered for the others to grow up. They didn't have enough time. And when we look back, why did we need or why was it required to have a language written with Armenian script? The Armenian people had their own alphabet since 405 and they kept using that alphabet unchanged by them. It starts with A and ends with K, it includes 36 vowels, A is the first letter of Allah, then K is the first letter of Christos, the Jesus. Then, in order to comply with the Latin alphabet, O and V letters were added, that was the religious belief and the Armenian people were placed with that. Anatolia was Turkified by time, the Armenians became a minority and the people were under the pressure. So they mostly spoke in Turkish but they did not forget the alphabet. The Turkish and Kurdish written with Armenian script came into life. Sayoknofa was born in 2200 and he was able to write poems and sing songs in four languages. The literary in here is very profound and includes many languages. In his book, the Ashiks with Turkish language say that most of these poets have given great masterpieces and most of them were written with Kurdish, Turkish, Armenian and Farsi words and it indicates that the people were living into each other, very integrated. My friend Sabri Kos 
has spoken about this after the 1850s among the Anatolian Armenians with the leadership of protestant art a movement of Christianity started and we see that they used the Turkish language with Armenian schools and then for the literate Armenian people all the Europe classics and especially the French classics were translated into Turkish with Armenian script. To us, so have the library research those genres and they, it will keep doing what it can. And also, I would like to tell you some brief information about some authors and some of their works. Martan Pasha, the story, Bir Adi, is the first Turkish novel with Armenian script. Eren published it 20 years ago and I think you still can find it. You can't find it. And Robert Dankov, Professor Robert Dankov, and Sabikos worked on this for long. The Turkish Poems, stories, songs, Sabri, Professor Sabri enlightened us on this with his great knowledge. Garo Abrahimian from Beirut is also a specialist on this area. Unfortunately, after 1970s, this literature went fell asleep. Imanu Mennush or Mennush Imanian will be translated into Turkish and published soon. The Manis in Turkish with Armenian script were also written for Balkan War and the first new Bible was published in St. Petersburg and Venice, Istanbul, Amsterdam, Smyrna, Kalkuta and in many, of, many cities of the Anatolia uh, more than 1,400 books were published in Istanbul, Angelia Foros and the Children's Journal was published in multiple languages. Nasrettin Hoca, Nasrettin Hoca's Jogs and the Eastern Jogs and many others can still be found in personal libraries. Üsküdar Publishing House has printed the best examples of those works with Armenian script. In Venice, six years after Gutenberg, the first printed book or Katafir, the book Friday, was published and they did it before many cities of Europe. The invention of Armenian alphabet was a milestone and a book was published for this. The teachers also were the leaders of research in this field. And I should also talk about Gilidia School. Between 975 and 1375, in Gilidia, Armenian Kingdom, many manuscripts were published. Toros Lostin has made the best of them. Seyhan magazine printed between 1873 and 1875 and it is one of the best examples with Armenian script. They were printed 
but they can be found in Jerusalem in Beirut's libraries. St. Laran Library also hosts the oldest Armenian manuscript which was written by Armenian historicist Gori and only one page remains and it is hosted by that library. And meanwhile, I also commemorate Kevin Kamuchian and he had great services for these works with Armenian script. His uncle Gasapinyan, Garo Abrahimian living in Beirut, Statista Dinas living in Athens, and Professor Robert Bangov in USA and Professor Turgut Kut in Istanbul. I would like to thank them for their services in order not to forget this culture. And I would like to thank Sabri Kos for his research, the research, and I would like to thank my partner. And I would like to thank my family for their support to me. Now I would like to show you some examples. This is published by us. This is the bibliographies of periodicals between 1727 and 1908, we still have them. And this one, Haydar Kirch, Merkel Osmania. This is the first newspaper published for Ottoman Palace with Armenian script. Kevor Pamukciyan's book. And Turkish scripts with Armenian scripts. Also another small book. Kevork Pamukçian was born in 1923 and he was he deceased in 1996. Aytap by Imanul and you can see the photo. I got it from Halepo, and this is a photocopy. I didn't bring the original. This was published for 1,600 years of invention of Armenian alphabet. And this one is named Geografiai Tabi. It was published in 1883 in Istanbul. Esas Muhtasar book for science of geography. Also, we have it in Karadeniz. And many of them are kept by Turquoise Publishing House. Thank you all. I would like to say a few words more. With Sabri Koz, while we were looking at them, we saw some room language with Armenian script. Let me try to read it. Pardon. Apopse Klersan Ti Manio Tris Romiar Vanit Ates Topipin Apopse Klepsan Di Maria Tris Armenides Oh, Armenides Oh, Armenides Oh, Armenides Romia Vartis Romia Vartinis Ates Topipini Topipini 
Tonero pu pino pini. Το νερό που πίνω, το πιπίνι, το πιπίνι, το νερό που πίνω, πίνι. Είστε, σε όλη την μια χάρη. Σόχα έχει κύπη στους αντίπους. Σόρα ρε μπέκι κόλπι. Σόχα και ζαλτές ο κύριε Τέρης. Διζάει Τέρη. Αμα που να έρθει να πάμε τη γεσ. Ίσαλα. And now we have uh, some some minutes for a discussion, 20 minutes, please. Uh -huh. The speaker is not speaking to microphone. Anlaşılan Osmanlı İmparatorluğu'nda yaşayan hatta Osmanlılar Osmanlı İmparatorluğu olmadan belki devirlerde dahi herkes bir bildiği insanı bildiği alfabe ile bir şekilde yazıya yazıp döküp birbirleriyle haberleşmişler, anlaşmışlar vesaire. Tahmin ediyorum ki edebiyat yapma ihtiyacı biraz daha sonraki yıllarda ortaya çıkmıştır. Babati işte Ermenice harfler ve Türkçe, Ermenice harfler ve Rumca, Osmanlı ve Arap harfleriyle Yunanca, Karamanlıcalar vesaire bir türlü şey var, kitaplar var. Aslında o yıllarda Türkçe'yi Latin harfleriyle I was wondering you showed us an example that Turkish is written with Latin alphabet. When did it start? And is there any literature written with Latin alphabet in those periods? Do you know anything about it? In 17th century, there was a book which was printed in Italy to teach Turkish. Uh, there is either one or two copies in Turkey, and one of them is in Turkish Language Institution Library, which is named Arab Harfleriyle Söz, words with Arabic letters. While I was working on kahve, the coffee shops, I checked when this coffee shop was used for the first time in Europe, and the eldest record is this one, as far as we know. This Söz book, but among the states, due to diplomatic issues, some correspondences also were made with Latin alphabet, uh, not as a literature, but it was used as a means to teach in 17th century with the Latin alphabet. Meninsky is a dictionary. And it is a much more wider vocabulary. As you know, it was published in Turkey and Mertoplu also made a dictionary with it. It also dates back to 18th century and they say the first edition burnt during the Vienna conquest, but it was a great work. Yes, 
Yani benim iki sorum olacak. I have two questions. Bir tanesi benim kafam karıştı. One, ee, I was confused. Şimdi Ermeni harfleriyle e, Rumca, yani Yunanca. You said Greek e, bir cemal olmalı ki, language with e, Armenian bir, scripts. E, There must be a yani sect so that e, this will yani be published cemal, because of some needs. Do you think? There was such a sect or such a community who needed them, and where did they live? During nation states period, most of the time, the minorities and their native language, they would say, we got the religion and we gave away the language. It means that, sorry, we gave away our language and we kept our religion. So it means that they are using the language of the dominant state and they were still bound to their own religion. So do you think they adopted the Gregorian sect of Christianity? So as a response to your first question, I would like to speak shortly. Around Izmir, Adapazarı, High Horons, the Armenian Greeks were living and they knew the alphabet, but their language was Greek and the books were printed for them. Arsenian's book will be printed soon on this issue. And I don't know about the other one. During Mübadeli period, High Hurums were speaking Greek. They were speaking Armenian and they were Greek people. They went all the way to Thessaloniki and they came back. It was a small sect, small neighborhood. And there is an interesting article about this. When was it published? I don't remember exactly, and I don't remember the name of the author. But there was this study, only one study, unfortunately, about this. I would like to say something very general. As you said, in the nation state, we combine the script, the language all together. And maybe this was not so striking for someone who lived 100 years ago. And there is a theoretical expansion about this. David Rinrash works on the world literature and the ancient Turkish uh, scripts are in the area he works on and very interestingly there are some indicators that indicate that the alphabet takes precedence of language. And the caste of the monks, the people who studied and became older, and it requires learning at least five alphabets as well as languages. I don't know how to respond to your second question. Well, you said we gave away the religion and we took the language. Another control, contrary example, the Kıpçak people living in Black Sea region. They also adopted Armenian sect 
and they wrote Turkish language with Armenian script. And they melted down in the society where they lived with the rest of the people. And they left their written works as a memory for us. So this is something that may happen at any period. When we read Agop Minsuri in the school in Ortake, he was reading Kurdish Bible. I saw it a couple of times and it's very interesting. On the other side of Euphrates, and I went to those villages as well, there are Christian Orthodox but praying in Kurdish and reads the book of God in Kurdish. The transition of the people is very interesting indeed. Like they write Arabic with Greek alphabet. There is also Latin and this is a separate branch of research and maybe Evangelia will shed a light on us in this issue. In the previous conference, Karamanlidika, you said the tombstones were Turkish. Do you know that any church built in Ottoman period and the tombstones, is there any Turkish text on them? One example, very quickly. This is from Gaziantep, a fountain. Turkish with Armenian script and you may see Turkish with Arab Arabic letters. This is this is the word they were done and some we can see on Islamic tombstones which indicated their professions, there were carvings, for example, a tailor, a teacher, or an architect, or a master, there were, there were rulers, there were scissors, which were drawn on the tombstones. Thank you. One thing about high horse. So, in their culture, is Armenian culture or the Greek culture overlays? Well, this is another discipline. I can't know which one overweighted, if being an Armenian or being a Greek, but had I known that you would ask this question, I have a great book printed for high morals in Greek and in Armenian. I would have brought that book and we could have given an answer to you. It was published half and half published in two languages, one side is Armenian, the other side is Greek. And we see the name of Greek patri patriarch and the Armenian patriarch on both sides. Sabri Bey, biraz önce Doğu Karadeniz'de bir sürü Armenice... Sabri Bey, you said in East, Eastern Black Sea, I didn't say Eastern Black Sea, I said north of Black Sea. So I think you do not mean Hemshin Lilash, who spoke Greek. No, no, I didn't, because the Turkish nationalists also use this argument. In our agenda, we do not have daily policies. We are interested in folklore, 
philology and history. We also know that, but it's not the good place to speak about it. Hemshin language is a very rich language, and its origin does not matter because when science indicates the truth, everything becomes silent. Those lying look in front of them, and those telling the truth raise their heads. There are some studies, dictionary studies, and many compilations on Hemshin language, but I do not mean them because Hemshin language is a derivative of Armenian language. It's not in my area of knowledge. I would not ask a question, just I would like to make a comment. First is about Hayhoron. Erzincan Kemaliye in Egin there are four Hayhoron villages with their churches still running and their books are in Armenian. Just a brief information. Some villages are still present and some of them were distracted and some of them are under the lake. And they are High Harun churches, but their books are in Armenian. I don't know if there is any specific reason, but we see that Armenian is active over there, and it may indicate something. And secondly, just a few things about periodicals with Armenian script. And the first one was printed in 1840, the tur first Turkish periodical with Armenian script. There is an official journal, one of the first of them is Takvimi Bakayi, the first official newspaper of Ottoman, and it was printed with Armenian script and in other languages. From 1840 to 1930, we know that the newspaper, newspapers with Armenian scripts were published. And where were they published? Maybe it can give us some clues. It was mostly published in Istanbul, in Aleppo, Antep, Bursa, Athens, Parna, Cairo, New York, New York, Marsilya, Lyon, Marseille, Beirut, Lyon, Fresno. Beirut, Fresno. We know that Turkish of newspapers and journals were printed in those locations. Thank you. There is something forgotten and I would like to add about it. For Hemshin language, we should also remember Uyebezit in Leiden and the scholar has many books and there is a journal they publish with Erivan University on Hemshin language. We should recall this scholar. Secondly, Sabri Bey said Armenian Kipchak language. It's like Karaman Nidika and there is a language and what was the origin? It is the subject of another discussion and we can't get out of that discussion. So it's a difficult subject for me. And there is a very nice research Edward Triarski in Warsaw 
with four different volumes. Three people worked on this. One of them is in Afyon, the other one is in Polu, and the third one is in Ankara Gazi. This is what I would like to say about Armenian Kupchak language in Ukraine. There is a researcher named Garkavis who is working in Kazakhstan now on this issue. For Turkish with Latin alphabet, there are two poems of Yunus Emre which are very old. We should also recall his poems. And the last question. Just the few, thing, few things I would like to remember. Yes, I was the editor during the compilations of Kamukchian's works. Just a few things I would like to say. You didn't highlight it. The relation between alphabet and religion and the sect. It's a very close relationship. The church has its own alphabet in order to keep their communities together. And in discovery of Armenian alphabet, I think this had an importance. And through church, this spreads to the people, even if the people forget it by time, while making any book or taking any note, because they have learned the writing from there, they take notes in Turkish with Armenian script and similarly a printed, a published literature develops in Karamanlidika we have also seen the same thing and whichever is their church and whichever book is sacred for them we see that that alphabet spreads. Those examples, I didn't think it was suitable for the High Harons, because when you look at their tombstones, we see that they have written Greek with Armenian script. I just wanted to make a reminder about it. Thank you.